Well, good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone that's joined the channel uh, since I had an opportunity uh, to host uh, a video on uh, Dave Jones' uh, EV blog. Uh, welcome aboard. Take a look at the the test equipment list and uh, uh, see all the videos and uh, check them out. Uh, shoot me any questions that you might have. Those of you that have been around might remember the uh, video I did about the auction score uh, that uh, I got from when the McGowan test the measurement shut down. And uh, one of the things that I got from them was these two uh, 3335A um, uh, signal generators. Now, one of them wasn't working when we took a look at them. So uh, what I want to do now is actually just power them on and we'll see what, uh, which one isn't working. Okay, now, let me turn this guy off here. You'll see unlocked here, uh, that's coming back and saying that uh, uh, the oven control oscillator that's in here is not uh, warmed up, and so the system can't lock on it. Um, let's turn this guy on here, and I think this one is the one that's broken. And we can see very light unlocked come through here. Uh, now, it turns out that, uh, uh, this little panel here is actually uh, controlled, this part of the panel and all of these other lights are controlled by the uh, display board or the controller board in here. The unlocked and some of the other lights over here, these enunciators, uh, are actually not controlled by that board. So uh, this looks like it's either got a problem with the, the power, uh, one of the rails might not be running, or there's a problem with that uh, controller board. All right, well, we'll take a look at that just in a minute. So let's uh, power that guy off. And now what I want to do is just see uh, what the signal looks like coming out of this guy. So let me push this back and I'll drop in my oscilloscope and then we'll take a look. Now that we're uh, connected up, I have, uh, these units have a 75 and a 50 ohm output. So I'm connected to the 50 ohm output and we're coming into channel four here. And it's a one time probe because it's just connected directly. Um, and actually, we can see if you notice that the unlock's gone off, so that uh, oven control oscillator's already uh, warmed up. So uh, let me just hit auto, and we'll see if um, uh, we're getting any signal. Nope. So uh, the frequency range on this is um, these units are 200 hertz up to 80 megahertz, with a uh, one millihertz resolution. Um, the amplitude on this goes from, uh, I think, minus 87 dB up to 13 uh, dBm up to 30, 13 dBm. So let's set the frequency of this at, say, 5 kilohertz. And we'll set the amplitude, ah, yeah, you can see it's minus 86 dBm. So let's just set that amplitude to zero. And then we'll hit auto here. And there we go. So, uh, one of the problems that's annoys me with the Rigol uh, scope, it's otherwise a nice little uh, scope here, is you can't get rid of the measurements uh, on it. So, let me just, uh, sorry, let me go back in here. We'll go default. It'll reset everything. And then we'll reset up uh, again for uh, the signal. Uh, now we're back uh, here and I have it set up. Uh, I wanted to move, make sure that was out of the road, which is why I forgot the scope wasn't set up correctly. And we have our measurements here. And so uh, 628 millivolt peak to peak, RMS of uh, 220 millivolts, which uh, is pretty much uh, you know, one millivolt down or three millivolt down from uh, zero dBm. And uh, it seems to be working. We see the hardware counter there close to that. Now. Uh, let me go change the frequency on this. So let's set it to, um, say, 45 megahertz. And we'll push auto here again. Now, the reason I'm jumping up to 45 megahertz is because that uh, exercises a different path in the output uh, uh, output for, of the, uh, the signal generator here. And we'll take a look at the block diagram of this just in a minute. But that's showing that's 45 on there, and it's, you know, in the range of, you know, zero dBm. 
So I think this guy seems to be working uh, as well. The, the only other thing we need to do is to uh, maybe try sweep mode. Now, uh, what I want to do is, you know, start with, uh, say, 45 meg. I'm going to do a sweep width of 1 megahertz. And let's go do a, a single sweep. And we should see the sweep change by the frequency change. And we can see it's running up here. And we're going to get uh, in. And we have 500k on either side. Let's set the sweep width to, say, 10 megahertz. And do a single one again. And now we're actually seeing a little bit more uh, visualization on the actual uh, screen there. You can see the waveform uh, falling in. And so we stopped at uh, 50 and we would have started at 40. So sweep seems to work. Amplitude seems to be roughly in the right area. Frequency seems to be roughly in the right area. So this guy here uh, is probably going to be uh, okay or going to be able to be adjusted and brought back in. Let's take a look at uh, the other one and we'll take a look at the block diagram and we'll see what's going on there. And now we're ready uh, to take a look uh, inside this unit. But before we do that, I thought we might uh, uh, just take a look at the block diagram and uh, get an idea of how the, the system works. So let me uh, zoom in a little bit so we can see the block diagram a bit better. There we go. And I'll just take a quick uh, drink. The drink of choice today is uh, a nice uh, Washington State uh, red wine. Not quite as good uh, personally as the Barossa Valley, um, but uh, still very good. Uh, and it supports the local economy and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, what we have uh, here is we have a, uh, we have the temperature stabilized oscillator, which is uh, in the unit. And it comes out and goes through a BNC jumper into a, a reference signal input to the, the internal reference. And so these two items are phase locked together and this had then puts a 10 meg out that you could go use on other uh, units. And then that reference sends out uh, one meg and uh, 100 kilohertz. And the one megahertz goes into uh, a, an end step loop and that will give us uh, frequencies ranging from 39 to 79 megahertz. And then the 100 kilohertz goes into a fractional end loop, which will give us frequencies from one to basically two megahertz. Uh, and so those two things are summed together. And then that gives us 40 to 80 megahertz that will come out on uh, uh, from the summation loop and then goes into the divider filter. Now, this is the bit where uh, the different two different ranges that I talked about uh, happen. So when we were doing the 45 megahertz uh, value, it comes straight out of this divider filter into the output amplifier, goes through the attenuator and comes out to the back here. When uh, we do the, and so to keep that at the right level, we tap off uh, the signal after the output amplifier through the level control, and that's fed back in here. And this gives us basically uh, 1.9 dB of control uh, here in uh, 100 dB or 0.01 dB. Uh, resolution and then the attenuator here gives um, uh, like 90 dB of uh, uh, attenuation so that gets us our 13 through to 87 uh, dB range. Now when we wanted that 5 kilohertz what happens here is we're still getting the 40 to 80 meg comes into here but what we're also then doing is turning off the outputs and the filters here uh, and then taking the reference again, which is 40 megahertz, and mixing those two values together to produce a 200 hertz to 10 megahertz signal, which then goes into the output amplifier. And so that was that two ranges. That's why, you know, checking the five kilohertz and the 45 kilohertz lets us check the path coming through here and then the other path coming through here. And then similarly to how the divider filter worked, we bring the output down here through the level control, feed it back into the mixer and that gets us uh, the control and the attenuator sets us and gets us our output. Now, uh, that's the basic idea of what's going on. And so with this unit, when we were uh, trying to get it to, to show something, it wasn't um, 
doing really anything. Uh, and if I turn it on now, I still see that little unlock light flash. So the first thing to, to check is probably to see, uh, is to see what the power supplies are doing. And so what we want to do is take the uh, cover off. So let me just turn this around uh, and we'll grab our posi drive uh, screwdriver because all of these screws are going to be posi drive. Now, there's actually, you, you can't quite see it here because I've, you know, I've got it, maybe we could see it. If we did, you see, there's actually a calibration sticker still on this. So hopefully what this means is that this unit uh, failed while in use and they just uh, put it straight onto the, uh, the shelf and that they didn't, um, you know, they wouldn't have come in and taken any uh, components out of it to use in other uh, devices. So let me, there we go. And we've got our lid off there. And now we can see uh, what is inside here. And let me take a, uh, let's take a little look. I don't think they have, uh, unlike some of the others, they, uh, other units, they'd have all of these uh, little cans labeled, but they don't have that here. Uh, this board, they don't have these little cans labeled. This board up the front was the one I was talking about, about it um, being connected to the uh, display here. Now, I think if you look, you know, we can see there's a little, this has been bent and that's a, you know, there's a little bit of writing on it. Hmm. That's uh, a little concerning. You know, we can probably take that uh, out. Just use these two things. There we go. And there you can see, if we take a look in, you can see the, um, uh, we have the CPU uh, in there. Uh, this would be, a, it's a Motorola part. Um, these things uh, used uh, uh, Motorola and then they used um, a mix of TTL and ECL. And if you haven't heard of ECL before, uh, ECL is the emitter coupled logic. Uh, and in this era, they, they adopted uh, ECL because um, it enabled them, ECL enables you to, to have a, a faster transition and a higher clock speed uh, because you're not operating the transistors in the saturated region. So there's no need to drive them out of saturation and this, you know, through the storage effect effectively. You know, I can use effect that many times. So the switching becomes faster. The downside to ECL is that uh, um, you have, a, have to have a minus 5.2 rail or a minus five rail. And so that's when you look at these instruments, you'll see a lot of minus five, minus 5.2 rails. Uh, and also uh, they have to be powered all the time and they're always sucking current. So they're dumping a lot of uh, heat. Uh, because of that. So that's why you see these enormous sized devices, big fans and all that sort of thing. Um, so this guy here uh, is, you know, looks to be, you know, it doesn't look as though anyone's written bad on it. So, oh, well, we'll go see. Let's drop that, uh, that guy. Now, unfortunately, I don't have uh, a riser, an uh, extender card to go and uh, use this. Is that supposed to, I wonder, I wonder which way that goes in. You know, it's that old Murphy thing, you know, any, uh, any card that's capable of being put in incorrectly will be. It, but it looks like what they've done, if you look here at the ends, the distance from this side of the board to the edge of the connector there is different from, uh, uh, the edge of the board here. So what that means is when this slots in, this connector is going to be too clo much closer than that. So I suspect that that, you know, stops it from being installed uh, the other way around. Anyway, let's uh, slide this guy back in if we can. Ooh, that's very tight in that. Oh. Okay, there we go. Now there are two switches on that board. So if the power supply comes up correctly, we should probably take a look at those switches. Anyway, that's seated in again. All right, and 
Over here, if you've never seen them, this is actually the little oscillator, uh, the temperature control oscillator here. And you can see the little oven that's in there. Um, if you get old HP gear, uh, these crystal oscillators, uh, especially if you can get uh, the ones that usually have the, uh, the high stability oscillator in them, you can get this old gear for virtually nothing. Um, and you can take these oscillators out and they make a great uh, oscillator to use if you want to build your own uh, 10 megahertz you know, uh, shop frequency standard. Uh, get a GPS uh, module or get a GPS DO from China, one of those uh, cheap jobbies, the, the BG7 TBL guys. Uh, and then you can use the, this as the crystal oscillator uh, because they'll be very, very accurate. Anyway, this uh, seems to be, I don't see anything that has burst into flames. So let's, uh, let me move my wine out of the road. Uh, let's go and have a look. Let me take a look at the, the manual and we'll see uh, where I'm supposed to measure. Hmm, BNC connector right there. That's interesting. Um, where I'm supposed to measure the uh, voltages to ensure that uh, things are working correctly. All right, be right back. Okay, well, after having looked in, uh, the boards that um, we should be looking at is actually, you know, eventually be measuring here if there's a problem with that. But what uh, the manual says to, to do is to check the four rails that are here on the motherboard. And so we have the minus 5.2, plus 15, minus 15, and plus 5 volts uh, here. And so we can come in and check those. So let's just go in and uh, turn the unit on. Okay. So... Minus five is actually, minus 5.2, which is the ECL value is only, is not uh, there. That's supposed to be minus 15. So it's not there either. That's supposed to be plus five and it's three. That's minus nine volts, and that's supposed to be minus 15. So plus 15, nine volts, nine volts, minus three. Okay, so there's clearly something wrong with the, the power supply. And so now what uh, I need to do is to work out what the approach uh, will be to actually uh, test that. So in some of the other uh, gear, you take the um, uh, you'll take the boards off uh, out to check because these boards may have a capacitor problem that's going to ground or something like that. So uh, what we'll do is I'll go do a little bit of research on that, and then we will uh, come back in part two of this video and uh, do the further investigation. Anyway, if you're finding this interesting, give it a, a thumbs up and uh, I'll catch you again uh, very soon.